are the seven most important principles that every chess player must know. It doesn't matter if your goal is just to beat your friends or maybe one day to become a grandmaster. In order to achieve any goal, you have to start with mastering the fundamentals. Number one, control the center. I like to compare the chessboard to a mountain. And from the peak, you have a nice overview about everything that is going on around. Well, the peak on the chessboard is the center. Those four squares where every piece is much stronger. Let's have a look at the knight. This is a beautiful example. The knight in the center of the board is much stronger than a knight on the edge or on the corner. Let's have a look. The knight here can go to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight squares. The knight can move to all those squares. And we say that the knight is so controlling those squares, meaning that if one piece of our opponent is standing there, we can capture it. Instead, the knight on the corner is much less powerful because it's just controlling one and two squares. The knight here that is just on the rim is controlling four squares. So the more the knight is on the center, the stronger it is. The more squares is controlling. If the knight is in the corner, it's quite weak. It's actually four times less powerful than a knight in the center of the board. So if the center is very important, how do you control it? Well, I recommend you to do two things at move one. If you are white, you go either with the move e4 or with the move d4. So you are placing a pawn in the center of the board. Usually they ask me, Alessia, what is the best opening for beginners? And I suggest you to play one e4, especially if you like open positions, if you like to solve tactics, and if you like to have a chance to attack your opponent or maybe to win quickly a game. Instead, with 1d4, the character of the position is going to be much more strategical, positional. So if you like long strategical battle where you think you have an upper edge on your opponent, d4 is your move. I like, I like e4, so please play e4. With the black pieces, I suggest you to just copy the first move of your opponent. If they play e4, you play e5. If they play d4, you play d5. I say copy just if they play e4 or d4. If they play g4, please do not play the move g5. Unless you are Magnus Carlsen and you want to troll your opponents, then that's okay. Principle number two, play with all your pieces. I remember when I was a kid, I had a box with all my toys and my mom said, just one at a time, do not throw the box on the floor, do not make a mess, Alessia. Well, you gotta make a mess on the chessboard, because you have to bring all the toys, all the pieces into the action. When I'm talking about pieces, those are the pieces, rook, knight, bishop and queen. In particular, the knight and the bishop are called minor pieces and the rook and the queen are called heavy pieces. In order to bring all the pieces to the party, you have to follow the following advice. Move one piece at a time. Because if you're moving this knight once, twice, three times, four times, five times, yes, you're going to have lots of fun with this knight, but all the other pieces are sleeping at home. In general, remember, if you have a piece in their starting squares, it's like if you're not playing with this piece. So bring all your pieces by moving once at a time. A very good suggestion is to actually start with the minor pieces. So if we would have a checklist, I would suggest you to first place a pawn in the center and then to bring the knight out and then the bishop out. So start by controlling the center and then develop all your minor pieces. One very big mistake that beginners are making is pushing too many pawns in the opening. In fact, in the opening, I suggest you to push one, or two pawns. And the idea to push pawns is either to control the center. For example, if your opponent here is not responding with the move e5, but is playing, for example, knight there, or actually any one square pawn move, I suggest you to take the center with two pawns. So knight here and one d4. The two pawns here are so strong. And now 
the bishop is ready to go out. This other bishop is ready to go out. The pawns are freeing the way for the bishops. Then the knight can move towards the center because the knight here would be a bit sad. The knight there also a bit sad. So we move the knight towards the center and this would be a perfect development. Apart from those two pawns, you shouldn't push other pawns in the opening unless it's, of course, very important. You don't want to blunder your queen in order not to push a pawn. Let's see a very bad pawn that you should never push. e4, e5, knight out. What is this knight doing? This knight is attacking this pawn. Now, never push the f pawn because the f pawn is protecting the king. Now, look at the king. He's already weak in this diagonal. And actually here, white is already nearly winning. You can take this pawn and saying, okay, usually you shouldn't trade a pawn for a knight because now white gave away a knight and black took a pawn. But here white is completely winning with the move queen check. We are giving a check and we are threatening to take this pawn. If the check is stopped by this pawn pushing, attacking the queen, we can just take here, we are giving a check and this rook is hanging. So we gave away a knight, we took a pawn and we were about to win a rook. We had really a great deal. If after queen check, the king is moving away, which is the only other move, we are taking the pawn with check. Now the king cannot move anywhere except from this square. And we go with the bishop. We give another check. The king cannot go anywhere except for this square. And now we are about to give mate. Queen there. The king cannot go anywhere. The queen cannot be captured because the pawn is protecting the queen. So there is just one square remaining. And now the only thing that we can do is to give checkmate by using this pawn. If we immediately push this pawn by giving a check to the king, there is still the move g5. And if we take, the queen is taking back, so we don't really have checkmate. So actually the fastest way to give checkmate is here to play the move h4, so that after any move of black, we're going to push here. And after this, we can finally take, the queen takes, and now we give checkmate with the queen. The queen is protected by the pawn. Oh, uh, that's nice. So please remember, do not push the F pawn. It protects your king. Another big mistake that beginners are making is to bring the queen out way too early. If you play a few games, you will notice that after E4, E5, your opponents will play queen H5. This move is tricky, but it's actually a mistake. I like what my fiancé, Noel, is saying about the queen. He's a grandmaster. You have to treat your queen like the quarterback in American football. What's the sense of it? Is that the queen is such a powerful piece that every time the queen is attacked by a knight has to move again. Every time the queen is attacked by a bishop or by a pawn has to move again. That's why the queen is very strong but also very vulnerable. That's why you don't want to bring it out way too early because it will be very easily attacked by enemy pieces. For example here, the queen cannot be attacked immediately by the knight because the queen will be taking this pawn. In fact, a very important tip I will give you also later is to always ask, what's the idea of my opponent move? The queen here is attacking this pawn, so we have to take care of it. And usually the best move is to bring the knight out in order to protect it. Now, why it can go on with the move bishop c4? Always ask, what's their idea? And you can see that the bishop is pointing here and also the queen is pointing there. Remember, f2 and f7 are the most vulnerable point in the starting position because those pawns are just protected by the kings. And if white, in this example, is attacking f7 twice, at the next move they are threatening mate. If black is just playing this move, attacking the queen, this is checkmate. I like to call it the kiss of death. Because the queen is giving a kiss to the king, but is protected, attention. So the king cannot move anywhere around, cannot take the queen because the queen is protected, and that's checkmate. This is valid every time that the queen is protected by any piece. Can be protected by a knight, can be protected by a pawn also, here. Can be protected by a rook, can be protected also by the king. Okay, now the king cannot go there. But any piece can protect the queen, if then the queen is kissing the enemy king, is usually checkmate. So you understand why many players love to play this, but if you know how to protect this checkmate, you will be alright. And the move here is to play g6. Now you see, the pawn is attacking the queen. So white is forced to move the queen back one more time. 
Your opponents might be very tricky and they go back with the queen here. What are they threatening? You're threatening a mate one more time. Now you have in general so many ways to defend. You have for example here you could push the pawn. You can bring the queen there. But in general, every move might have a problem. For example, if we go with the queen here, yes, we are protecting this square, but we are blocking the bishop from going out. If we push this pawn, we are blocking the square where this knight would like to go. That's why here the best move is to just bring the knight out. We are interfering with the attack of the queen over the pawn. And this knight, of course, cannot be taken because if the queen takes, we are taking back with the queen and we won quite some material. And your black is actually already nearly better, you see, already slightly, slightly, slightly better with the black pieces, which is a huge success because usually white having an extra move has a slightly better position in the opening. But black is already better because white has wasted just time bringing the move up and down. And now this move here is blocking the most natural square, the strongest square for the knight to be developed. And so the knight will have to move here and then black can keep going with the bishop out, castling. We will get to the castle. One last trick. Queen b3. Now again, the queen and the bishop are attacking this very important point. And we don't have a good way to defend it because with the queen here, we are blocking the bishop. But here there is a very fun idea. Knight d4. We are attacking this queen and if the queen moves, we are all right. I'm explaining this because it happens so many times at beginner level. So unfortunately, you have to know this trap. If the bishop is taking here, it seems like you're losing a pawn because now the king cannot take, you have to move your king here. But now the problem is that your opponent has the queen under attack and the bishop under attack. So if they move the queen anywhere, you're going to win the bishop. The only square where they can go to maintain the protection of this bishop is this one because they cannot go here because the square is controlled by the pawn and they cannot go there because the square is controlled by the knight. So after queen there, you want to get rid of this queen, you attack it one more time with the pawn. Now the queen has no way to stay on this diagonal, the queen has to leave somewhere and you take a piece and you want material. This is why you don't bring the queen out too early and principle number three, king safety. In order to bring your king to a safe place, you have to castle the king. For example, let's play a few moves uh, for white, great moves for white, and let's say that black is just wasting time with uh, uh, the knight moves. Now here we saw already how we want to develop our pieces. The knight is going back, we develop the knight. And the knight goes there, we develop the other knight. The bishop is out, the other bishop is out. And now it's really important that you castle your king, that you bring the king to safety. There we go. There are actually two reasons why you should castle. One is to bring the king to safety. The king here has a nice shield of pawns, plus the rook is really well protected. But two, you are also bringing the rook into the play because the rooks are the last pieces to join the party because they are at the corner of the boards. And how to bring the rook to the party? Usually rooks love open files. That's why here the best chance to move the rooks to the party is to bring them to the e file and to the d file. That's why if the knight keeps going around, we push the queen not too far away, not too out, because we have to keep the queen protected. And then we move the two rooks to these files that they are not open files because the definition of an open file is files where there are no pawns. But on the E and the D file is the higher chance that some pawns are going to be traded at some point. So those are the best files where the rook could be happy in the future. This is guys an example of a perfect development. If you can do this in your games, you will have an amazing position. You see here, actually this is the evaluation bar that gives an evaluation of the position. And white is nearly completely winning, is nearly all in favor of white. Even if black didn't blunder, didn't lose any of their pieces. But that's why I say, if the pieces are in their starting squares, they are not counting. They are not, they are not important. They are not uh, joining the action. We are almost at the four golden strategies that you have to know. Last thing that you have to remember about the king's safety is do not push the pawns in front of your king because those pawns are your shield. You have to keep those pawns there. There is just one exception. Let's have a look at this position. And it is that sometimes you want to push the H pawn, uh, both colors want to push the H pawn 
in order to give some air to the king. Because here, if white is removing, is moving, for example, the rook, the rook is sliding here, and this is back rank checkmate. Actually, the rook can still cover, but this is checkmate. So it's useful at some point to play the move h3 in order to give a space to the king. Also, black can play this move because they have the same problem. And now if the rook moves away, this is actually just a check because the king can go there. When do you have to play this move, h3 or h6? Not too early, but when you feel like you might be in danger of the back rank mate, you can play this move, it's useful, and it doesn't make your king much, much weak. One step, remember, is much better than two steps. Because here, if you push the pawn two steps, this square is suddenly becoming weak, and some pieces might slide there. Instead, with a pawn here, actually you're controlling the square. And so a queen, for example, a black queen, cannot go there and attack your king directly. The previous rules were very important for the opening, to start the game in the best way possible. But now I will give you four principles that you can apply to every single position, in every moment. At the beginning, in the middle game, and also in the end game. First one, always ask... What's the idea of your opponent moves? We already saw this in this position. You have to ask what's their idea in order to understand that the queen is attacking the pawn. The same happens here at move two. If the knight goes there, you have to ask what's their idea. Okay, they are developing a piece, but they're also doing something else. They're attacking this pawn. So then you can find a way to defend that pawn. Another very important strategy is to trade off pieces, simplify the position, when you wrap material, I will show you a very quick way to win material very quickly. White is playing the movie 4, black is playing the movie 5. Now the knight is going out, as we say, the knight is going towards the center, attacking this pawn. Black is seeing this and is protecting the pawn with the knight. Now it's not convenient to take because we would give away a knight that has a value of 3 for a pawn that has a value of 1. So we just develop the bishop out and... I like this square for the bishop because the bishop is looking at the most vulnerable spot in the black position, the f7 point. Now, black is just following the rules and developing the knight. And now there is a very interesting idea that is called fried liver. The knight is moving a second time, which usually is not what you should do. But there is a very clear purpose, is that the knight and the bishop are both attacking this point. Now, if your opponent is just trying to kick your knight back, you are taking gear, and this is one of the most important tactics in chess. The king cannot take back because the bishop is protecting the knight, and so with the knight, you are attacking at the same time the queen and the rook. This is called fork. Now, your opponent needs to save the most valuable piece, so the queen is moving out, but here you're just taking the rook. And now black won a pawn and the rook. This is the material advantage that black, that, sorry, that white has here. What is the best way to actually win this position? And this to trade off pieces. If here, guys, you manage to first trade off the rooks, then to trade off the knights, then to trade off all these bishops, and eventually also the knights and the queens, you would end up magic boom in this position. And here. It's much simpler to win, and also you have very few risks. What do you have to do? You have to trade a few pawns, so it's black to move. Oh, okay, you can't castle anymore, never mind. You move this, then you can trade uh, a few pawns, the king goes, you go with the other pawn, you bring the king. You're going to, at some point, to collect enemy pawns, and then you promote another pawn, you make a queen, and you will give me. It's much simple. It's much simpler to win this position, rather than this one with still so many pieces on. This rule is very important also if you lost material, because you should never give up. The more pieces you keep on the board, the less you will feel the difference between your pieces and the advantage that your opponent has. In this position is a rook and a pawn. So keep your pieces and try to make a mess. Another very important rule, and beginners do it wrong so many times, do not push pawns unless you really, it's really important because pawns are the only pieces, they don't go backwards. And so once you push a pawn, it's forever. And beginner tends to do this a lot because with pawns, you can attack lots of pieces. For example, e4, e5, knight out, attacking this pawn. And now there is an opening that is called Philidor defense, where you are defending this pawn with another pawn. 
Here usually white goes for the center and after the trade of pawns, the knight is very strong in the center of the board. The knight is out, the other knight is out. The knight was also attacking this pawn, so the knight is developing and protecting. Now, so many players are playing here the move c5. And this is a mistake, because this move is tempting, because the pawn is attacking the knight. So you're forcing the knight to move one more time. But it's not that you're developing a piece, you're just pushing a pawn, which is different. You don't have to play with all your pawns, you have to play with all your pieces. So here, black can move away the knight, and then you might say, okay, but what is the problem of pushing the pawn? Well, actually, the problem is this one, this pawn behind, and now is no longer protected, plus this diagonal is suddenly very much weak. Because now white can play the intermezzo, in-between move. What is an in-between move? Every time you have a direct threat, if I'm not just moving the knight away, solving the immediate threat, and I'm playing another move, this is called intermediate move. Because I want to move this knight away, but I will do it the next move. I'm first giving you a check, exploiting the fact that you cannot play the move c6, attacking my bishop because the pawn is pushed uh, way too much, and so now you have to find another way to cover. You won't do it with the queen because I'm winning it. If you go with the knight here, I'm going to take. And after pawn takes, I take back with the bishop. And this is another double attack. I'm attacking the king, attacking the rook at the same time. And here white is winning material. Let's say there are other two ways to cover here. Knight there or bishop there. But it doesn't matter what you play. Let's say knight here. Now the knight will be moved. For example, here it's a very powerful square. I'm attacking this pawn how many times? One and two. And this pawn is just protected once. So here is another very quick suggestion in order to see if you can win material or not. Count the attackers and count the defenders. If you have more attackers than defenders, you can win this pawn. And so the knight is really threatening to take here. After the bishop is taking, I'm taking back with the queen. This is a big example to see that here, even if black didn't lose material, uh, due to the move c5, they are not blundering a pawn a piece, but they're actually making this pawn so weak that they will eventually lose it. In this position, after, sorry, after knight f5, the engine gives an evaluation of 0 0.7. Even if the material is equal, white is nearly plus one, nearly has already the extra pawn, meaning that this pawn is going to probably fall at some point. So remember, move pawns only if necessary. Pawns are not going backwards. Final of the golden rules is one principle that can help you in every single position. Because once you have developed your pieces, controlled the center, castled, what do you do? Well, a very general chess plan is in every chess position, try to improve your worst piece. In this position is black to move. The material is equal. It's a bit of a fun position, but it's one played between one of my uh, subscriber and their opponent. So here, material is completely equal. Each side has captured a pawn, a bishop, and a knight. This king is still not castled, and white didn't follow so many principles. Look at how many pawns they have pushed. This is not what you should do also here. Usually, just focus on the central pawns, and then play with your pieces and castle. A black on the other side played quite well, already the king is castled, there is a rook to the open file, all the pieces are out of their starting squares, so it's a good position, but how to move on? So here, the rook is well placed, his bishop is in an open file, so he's perfect. The bishop here is also very strong, controlling all the squares, even threatening a check here. The bishop is also pinning this knight. What is a pin? You can't move this knight away because the bishop behind will be hanging. If the knight moves there, for example, the bishop is going to be captured by the other bishop. So this bishop is very strong. The queen is also doing well because you don't want to have the queen out too early. There are still so many pieces that could attack the queen. So the queen is in a good shape. This rook is in good shape. Uh, let's make them green. So it's about this rook and this knight. So one idea could be just to double the rooks. This is a technique that is very powerful because you bring two rooks on the d-file, for example. Let's play this, the king castles, let's go with the other rook. And now one rook is threatening to go there. And the rooks are so strong in the second rank or in the seventh rank. So in the second rank, if you are with the black pieces, you want to, let's play just one move, you want to bring a rook there because usually there are lots of pawns. Well, their opponent 
pushed way too many pawns, so there are not any more these pawns. But already there is this one, so after the queen moves, you can take this pawn. You also have a check here, because the bishop is protected by the rook, and also this other pawn will be hanging. So here, you're really enjoying your life with the rook on the second rank. For white, you have to bring the rook on the seventh rank. So, this rook could be improved by this, and how can this knight be improved? Well, one move, and it's actually the best move of the engine, is knight d7. Now, if you see like, okay, engine is suggesting knight d7, you might say, what is this move? <laughs> Why? I really don't understand. But it is this. You're improving a knight that is actually not playing at all. Because the knight cannot go there because those pawns are protected by the other pawns behind. The knight can also not go there because the squares are controlled by the pawns. So the knight cannot move forward towards more active squares. And is not really doing much here. He's not defending the king. He's not doing anything important. That's why knight e7 wants to bring the knight towards nicer squares. Also here, there is another precise reason, is that you would like to push this pawn in order to trade those double pawns. Double pawns are pawns on the same files, and usually it's like if they count nearly as one pawn, or one and a half. So if you can trade a pawn, for example, if you can trade those two pawns, it will be very good. Because rather than have three and off against three, you will be left with three versus two. But why is knight d7 improving the knight? Well, it's because where you want to go next. After the move castle, we can play the move c5. Now it's really nice, because after the pawn trades, how would you take back? You have two options, with the queen or with the knight. And actually with the knight is a mistake. Because the knight here, is it really powerful? The knight is not attacking anything, and the knight cannot move forward again cannot go here because the pawn is protected by the other pawn, cannot go there and there because this pawn is controlling those two squares, and cannot go there because the knight is controlling the square. So the knight is not really strong there. Instead, by taking with the queen, we are giving a check, the king is moving, and then the knight is going there, and now finally, the knight is looking a very nice square where he's going to attack this bishop, uh, it has this square where it would be attacking this rook, and maybe also this pawn. So... This is a real improvement of the night. We are ready for the final principle of this video. If you guys are enjoying this video so far, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. We are about to get 100,000. So join us, this amazing community. And let's go. The final principle. How to win a game. So we already saw one idea before. When you wrap material, simplify the position, trade off pieces so that the end game will be easy to win. But how to actually win material. Well, one way, and this will be one of the most important way if you started playing chess and you want to get to a thousand elo. You have to take the free pieces that your opponent will be offering you. I promise. Your opponent will blunder pieces, will leave you some hanging pieces to take. For example, in this position, what is the material? The material is completely equal, meaning that each side has just captured two pawns, two pawns and two pawns. Each side has developed nearly all the pieces. There is just one piece that is still in the starting square. Uh, both sides have castled. It seems like a very good position. Uh, also, they didn't push way too many pawns. There is this pawn that is pushed just to give the king a brief square. Seems like nice. But now, white blundered, playing the move h3. This move is hanging a piece. And you might say, where? <laughs> because this knight is protected uh, by this pawn. The point is that this pawn is actually pinned because the bishop is pinning the pawn, meaning that this pawn cannot be moved because the king would be under check and you can never leave the king under check. So actually queen takes g3. It seems like the queen is hanging, but actually you just want a piece. Let's see another example, already much harder. We have another position, it's super complex. There are lots of pieces on the board because just one pawn got traded. So each side has captured one pawn. All these pawns are all blocked, you can see. They cannot move forward. Every time two pawns are touching each other, they cannot advance anymore. So all this side of the board, the king side, is blocked. So the action is all going on the queen side. In particular, there is an open file where there are some pieces. Now black made a big mistake. They played the move bishop b4 attacking the queen but here you have to be careful because taking the free piece is harder than it might seem in general you have this rule that there is a piece here 
and you have to count the attackers and see how many defenders there are. And now this bishop is attacking the queen, yes. But actually this bishop is attacked by the knight and by the queen. So two attackers. How many defenders? Just one, just the knight. So here, white can successfully take the knight and after knight takes, you might think, hey, I can take this knight. But look at the evaluation bar. No, because you forgot about the rooks that are suddenly looking at each other once the knight is capturing. So once the knight is taking, there are the rooks that are looking at each other. If you are taking here, you're leaving. You're leaving the rook without protection. That's why here, the best move is again an in-between move. Before making the obvious move to take this knight and hanging piece, you're first trading the rooks. You're also attacking the queen, so the queen needs to take back. And then you're taking your extra piece. Now here, the strategy is always the same. Simplify the position, trade off pieces, and win the endgame. You might say, how do I win the endgame? And this is what we are going to see. We are going to see two amazing techniques that you can use to checkmate your opponent in any situation. Number one, the staircase. Here we have a queen and a rook. And this is a checkmate that we need to achieve. What are we doing? The queen is blocking all these squares, all these seven rank, so the king cannot go up, right? All these three squares are blocked, the king cannot go up. So the queen is blocking this, the rook is instead giving a check and controlling all these squares. Plus, the king cannot take the rook because the queen is protecting. So this is a check. There is no way to capture the piece that is giving a check. There is no way for the king to run away. This is checkmate. How do we get there? There we go. The first technique that you have to learn is the staircase, meaning that you will first bring the queen and the rook like this, and then with one piece, you will block one rank. With the other piece, you will give a check. And then you will keep going with all the pieces. For example, the king is moving. You block this rank now with the queen so that the king cannot advance. And after the next move, you will give a check. The king cannot go there, cannot go up because the queen is controlling all the squares. The rook is controlling all this. So the king has to go back. And now you repeat, you go with the queen. Check, the king has to go back. Remember, the rook is not hanging because the queen is protecting it. The king goes back and now you repeat. The king moves. You keep going until the king cannot go out of the board. And so this is checkmate. The same technique is valid if you have two rooks, but you have to be a bit careful because the rook behind is not protecting the rook forward. So once you bring the rook here, the king moves, you cover this rank with the rook. If the king moves now, you cannot play rook there because the king will be taking the rook. So in this case, what do you do? You bring the rook that you would like to move to the other side of the board. The farther away from the king, the better. Now the king moves and now you have to block this rank. And so you bring the rook. The king moves and now again a check. The king cannot go up because there is this rook. So the king has to go back. Attention, your rook is under attack. So what do you do? You bring the rook to the other side and then you repeat, you give a check. The king moves, you give a check and that's checkmate. Second technique and final technique is the box. What if you have just one queen or just one rook? You have to achieve this position. This is checkmate. Basically, we saw it already, it's the kiss of death. The queen is kissing the king, giving a check. The king cannot move anywhere. All the squares are controlled by the queen and the king cannot take the queen because the king is protecting it. So how do we get there? Starting from this position, you have to always create a box for this king and always make sure to make the box smaller. How do you do? You have to place the queen in a very precise configuration. Queen there. In this way, if you place the queen as a knight towards the king, you're creating this box. Now the king is blocked and cannot go out of this box. The rule is never give a check. Now every time your opponent is moving, you copy their movement with the queen. They go here, you copy. And now you have a new box. The box is going to get always smaller. The king moves, you will have a new box, always smaller. And now the king is moving and you copy. The box is getting always smaller. There we go. And the queen is moving. And again, the box is getting smaller. King moves, a smaller box, and now attention. Every time the king reaches one square on the edge of the board, you have to stop coping because if you do that, you might be in big danger. If the king goes there and you copy, this is stalemate because the king has no move. 
and there is not a check. So this is stalemate and the game would be a draw. So please do not do that. And here, every time the king gets to the corner or to any square on the edge of the board, any of this square, the only thing that you have to do is to make sure that the king cannot go out from the edge of the board. How do you do it? By placing the queen on the rank or on the file next to the king. For example, if you want to maintain the king on the h file, you can just place the queen on the g file. Make sure that the king has just at least two squares to move. For example, here, this is the minimum amount of squares that you have to leave to the king. Because now the king can move here and then can go back there. So the king has two squares that he can go up and down until you bring the king. So this is one idea to block the king. If you want to instead bring the king on the eighth rank, you can just go with the queen here. Please don't go with the queen there because this is another stalemate. So you go with the queen there. You're blocking the king. Now the king has three squares and then you're ready to bring the king. Yeah, the final step is to bring the king as close as possible. And now once the king moves, you're going to give the kiss of death. The queen is placed in front of the king. The king cannot move anywhere. The queen is protected by the king. That's checkmate. What if... We have a rook. This is much harder, but the technique is the same. We want to bring the king to the corner of the board. I'll show you the checkmate. This is a very typical checkmate. The king is controlling all the squares up where the king could run out. And the rook is giving the final check and controlling, in this case, the eighth rank. How do we get there? The box this time cannot be done just by the rook because the rook is not protecting itself. You will see that the king might be attacking the rook. So the box will be a collaboration of the king plus the rook. Let's go. We bring the king. And now we created this nice little box. As you can see, if the king would not be protecting the rook, the rook would be captured. So now every time we make the box smaller, making sure that the rook stays protected. There we go. The king moves and we make the box smaller. Now, the king is moving. If we bring the rook there, we make the box smaller, but our rook will be hanging. So every time we cannot make the box smaller, we have to bring the king closer. For example, king here. Now, the king moves and never give a check. Once you're making the technique of the box, you don't want to give a check because if not, you actually are letting the king run out. So never check and you move the king. Now, this is the box and the king can move. Uh, for example, if the king moves here, this is the box that you're making smaller. If the king moves there, you cannot make the box smaller. So you try to get closer with the king and you go in front. Now the king moves and you make the box smaller. The king moves there and you cannot make the box smaller. So you lose a tempo with the king. The king moves, you follow. The king moves, box smaller. And there you go. You lose a tempo, box smaller. And there you go. You keep going, making the box every time smaller until... Remember, you have to leave at least two squares. Every time the king reaches one of the square on the edge of the board, the important is that you cut the king out. For example, now the king is on the eighth rank. How do you limit the king? By placing the rook on the seventh rank. Now the king cannot escape anymore. All the squares are controlled. The king can just go up and down here. Then the final step, you have to bring the king facing your enemy king. There we go. We bring the king. We bring the king. And now we give checkmate. I want to show you just one little thing. What if at this point is why to move? Because you cannot give mate. And the nice way is to waste the tempo with the rook. Because now you can move away the rook from the seventh rank. Because the king is controlling all this square. So you move the rook here. You're controlling with the rook this square. And with the king all those squares. If you move the rook there instead, the king can run here. And now if you follow, the king can go there. If you give a check, the king is escaping. So how do you do here? Just rook there. All the squares are controlled by the king and the rook. The king moves and you give checkmate. Last, the very last thing, guys, to win a chess game is to give checkmate in the middle game. And one of the most important checkmate that you have to know is the kiss of death. Every time the queen is kissing the king, for example, here, black is moving c5. And now the queen is taking this pawn. The queen is protected by the bishop, but can be protected by the knight or by any other piece. This is checkmate because the king also cannot run away. The same, and this is very important, we haven't seen this yet, is once the king is castled, if you bring the queen, uh, sorry, if you bring the bishop plus the queen pointing together at this pawn, 
if your opponent is not careful, for example, here, they might say, oh, there is a free rook. You're giving checkmate. This is a very nice checkmate. Now, there are so many checkmates that you can make in the middle game. And the best way to do it is to train with puzzles, chess puzzles. So here we go. I chose some mating one puzzles. If you go in puzzles, custom puzzles, you can just select your theme. I selected checkmate in one. So let's see some checkmates uh, in one that we can give here. So here we have a back rank checkmate. Uh, always to solve the checkmate in one, you have to see, okay, enemy king is black to move. Where can the king go? All these squares cannot go there because the bishop is controlling. So this is back rank checkmate. We give a check, control all the remaining squares. We'll see a final one. Where can this king go? This king cannot move here because the rook is controlling all these squares. Also, the king cannot move there because the rook, the other rook, is controlling all the squares. Plus, the king cannot move up because the square is controlled by the bishop. And the king cannot move there because the square is control is occupied by the rook. So it's actually enough to give a check, maintaining all the squares uh, protected. How do we give the check? If we give a check with this rook, we lose it. But if we give a check with the other rook, the rook is protected by the pawn, and this is checkmate. If you enjoyed this video, remember to like and subscribe. And if you want to improve in the fastest way possible, my grandmaster fiancé is working on a course, Beginner Chess Mastering, everything that you have to know in order to get to 1200 ELO and be home. The course is not yet out, but if you leave your email, you will get all the information plus a massive discount as soon as the course is out next month. Anyway, there will be still lots of free content here on YouTube, so subscribe. And see you guys next time. Ciao!